everyone dies. And when it's our time to go, some of us will be embalmed, buried, some cremated. But there's a place where our bodies still tell stories long after death, and it's in our own backyard. This week, we take you to the body farm. There are only a handful of body farms across the U.S. The first and the most well-known got its roots right here. Here's 10 News reporter Leslie Ackerson. I said, I need some land to put dead bodies on. It all started with an obscure phone call four decades ago. Today, it's a world-renowned facility located in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's called the Forensic Anthropology Center, better known by its nickname, The Body Farm, a site where the decomposition of human bodies aids in forensic research. I mean, I, I hadn't done this before. In fact, nobody had done this before. This was the first facility of this in the world. Rewind the clock, and in 1981, the body farm was just getting started. But the reason we're doing this is because there is no data that exists on this at all. Law enforcement officers bring me a skeleton. Uh, we simply are guessing at how long that individual's been dead. Dr. Bill Bass was working as an anthropologist for the University of Tennessee. His office and classrooms underneath the famed Neyland Football Stadium. Time goes by and I'm called for various cases. And one day the phone rang and it was a detective from Clarksville, Tennessee. They had a body they wanted me to take a look at, but I didn't know where to put it. The restroom right outside of my office, the janitor used the shower area for him to store janitorial supplies. And I thought, well, I don't have anywhere else to put it. And the best chewing out I ever had was from a janitor in South Stadium Hall. He goes in to get his janitorial supplies, and here's this really smelly, decaying body. He shook his finger and said, don't you ever do that again. Okay, I never did that again. Bass needed a solution. So I went up to see him, and I said, Dean, I need some land to put dead bodies on. Well, that was the beginning of the body farm. Along the winding Tennessee River, Dr. Bass was given three acres settled in the back corner near the UT Medical Center's parking lot. But funds were scarce, so Bass and students did most of the startup work themselves. We didn't have anything in the budget for this, so here I am cutting trees and so forth. The facility itself was really quite small. It was the original chain link cage. They had some burials outside the cage that they did the original buried body studies in. But that was really it. For a time, the facility was off the radar. This site is located somewhere here in the Knoxville area, but Dr. Bass asked that we not divulge the location for fear that local curiosity seekers would come by and ruin some of the scientific data. Not everyone was thrilled with the prospects of the research. There was a protest. It was the only protest that we've ever had, and now we know that the community loves us and supports us. News of the small facility would spread thanks to a New York Times bestseller. Up until this time, I had an obscure little research facility in the hills of Tennessee. When she did this, it was internationally known right off the bat. The notoriety in literature didn't stop there. Bass has co-authored his own 15 novels based off of the body farm. But what's happening inside these gates is far from fiction. It's valuable science, and his foundation for the facility has grown into a legacy carried on today. In Knoxville, Leslie Ackerson, 10 News. And you can read more about the beginnings of the body farm online right now at WBIR.com. And you know the history now, so join us tomorrow as our series continues. We will visit the site for a rare look at the research underway at this moment.